The 2024 NFL Draft is officially in the books. Six teams drafted a quarterback in round one. Receivers flew off the board, and there was an overarching focus on the trenches. We saw it all. And I was particularly impressed with what the Cardinals, Steelers, and Commanders did to improve their rosters. I've had a few days now to reflect on an incredible week in Detroit, and I wanted to take a closer look at the five picks that I liked the most in each of the seven rounds. These aren't necessarily the best players taken in each round. Hey, I love the Bears taking Caleb Williams at number one and the Cardinals landing Marvin Harrison Jr. at number four just as much as everyone else. Coming out of the first round with the williams oduns duo is a dream scenario for Chicago. Oduns was my sixth-ranked prospect, and I firmly believe that no matter how talented a young quarterback is, and Williams is plenty talented, a team should do everything in its power to surround him with the best possible supporting cast. The Bears furthered that effort with the addition of Oduns to a now-stacked receiver room. He's an exceptional route runner, and Williams will love his contested catchability. There was no debate for me throughout this process that Latu had the best tape of the defensive players in this class, and he was 12th in my rankings. Medical concerns were the only issue that had to be closely examined. He medically retired with neck issues in 2020 while at Washington before returning and transferring to UCLA. But Indianapolis clearly had the assurance it needed to make a justifiable investment in him. Latu has a refined pass rush skill set, and he had 23.5 sacks over the past two seasons. Mitchell had a dominant college career at Toledo that included 39 pass breakups over his last two seasons, and he followed it up with stellar showings at the Senior Bowl and Combine. He was on the short list of the cleanest prospects in the class, and he filled Philadelphia's biggest need. Darius Slay and James Bradbury are both over 30 years old, and GM Howie Roseman was able to land my CB one way down at number 22 without trading up. The Buccaneers' most pressing need entering the draft was fortifying the interior offensive line. Barton began his Duke career at center in 2020 before playing three seasons at left tackle. He'll likely play along the interior in Tampa Bay, but that versatility is huge for this team. He brings elite mobility and run blocking. Leggett was the 28th player on my board, as one of the most explosive players in the draft class. Get the football in his hands and good things are bound to happen, thanks to his power and acceleration as a ball carrier. His combine measurables and testing results, 6 foot 1, 221 pounds, 4.39 second 40 yard dash and 40 inch vertical jump, jumped out to me because they aligned with the tape. This pick continues a really strong offseason for the Panthers, who have poured countless resources into improving the environment around Bryce Young. The former Washington signal caller is turning 24 on May 8th and isn't projected to play for a few years while he learns behind veteran quarterback Kirk Cousins. We just don't know when he is actually going to be the starter in Atlanta. If he doesn't start until he's 26, 27 years old, that's one thing. But I also know that he had a very long medical history that teams were examining very, very closely, Yates said. He tore the same right ACL twice during his college career and had two separate season-ending shoulder injuries. While Kuyper believes Knicks landed in a solid situation with head coach Sean Payton, he said he chose the former Oregon starter because he was the lowest-rated quarterback on his draft board among the first-round selections. Kuyper noted that Knicks has some similarities to the legendary Drew Brees, who thrived under Peyton, but he doesn't expect Knicks to transform into Brees anytime soon. Only time will tell if Yates and Kuyper's predictions turn out to be correct, but Pinnock's and Knicks will surely be motivated to prove them wrong.